Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Uh, today we're going to be working on physicsclassroom.com uh, in the topic static electricity on the final concept builder at the time that I made this video titled Electric Field Intensity. Okay, and this gets us to the idea of uh, that an electric field puts a force on a charge. The last video we looked at uh, talked about an a charge creating an electric field around it. That was big Q. Now we're going to put a charge little q into that electric field and see how it's how it is pushed. Okay. Um, so we see that the equation here is that the force that is put on an electric field is the electric or on charge in electric field. Excuse me. The force put on a charge in electric field is the strength of that electric field times the uh, the amount of that charge, the amount of charge that object has. Okay, so force is of course measured in newtons. Electric field here is measured in newtons per coulomb, which will cancel nicely with the coulombs of our charge that's put into that electric field. So in this concept builder, it does more than just this equation, but this is one the new thing that we're introducing right here. And that is, uh, it gives you this uh, table down here, or one similar to it, not this exact one. Okay, so a table similar to this. So we need to figure out what each of these uh, columns represents. So out of this equation, we've got three, um, three columns. Our first uh, thing is the force, the force on a charge in an electric field. So we see force experienced by the test charge. That is going to be our force. Then next we see that E is the electric field, and that would be right here, the electric field. And finally, we see Q is the charge uh, that is in an electric field. And so which of these two charges is going to be? Well, this is the one that's creating the electric field. That would be our capital Q. We'll get to that in a moment. But right now, the charge used to test the electric field, that is the one. This is the one that's experiencing the force. All right. So then if we have, as we know with any good equation, if you have two of the variables, you can solve for the third one. So any of these rows that have two uh, variables, um, you could solve for the third one just by rearranging the equation and plugging in. Good old plug and chug. But for the ones that are missing two, we're going to have to do more. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, you can actually get a lot of these answers without plugging and chugging. Uh, for my class, we're about to take a quiz on being able to plug and chug through this equation. So you might want to go ahead and at least check your work that way. But let me go through the shortcuts that will help you if you understand what's going on with these charges and these electric fields. It will help you to fill out this chart much more quickly. Okay, so the next thing we looked at in our last video that uh, the electric field is created by a charge, capital Q, that is a certain distance from the point that we want to measure the electric field. So notice that K is a constant, so that's not going to change. So if our Q stays the same and our R, or some uh, classes use D, our Q or our D stay the same, then uh, the electric field will be the same. It'll be constant. So let's go ahead and finish off filling in these the rest of these uh, columns. So we see that the charge creating the electric field is uh, our capital Q. That's going to be capital Q. And we see that the distance between the two objects is R. And I'm going to put R. R, why isn't it writing for me? R, and I'll put D in parentheses because some uh, schools and textbooks use D instead. You can see uh, physics classroom actually uses D instead. Okay, but either one is fine in our equation, that's R. All right, so now we said if Q and R are the same, then E has to be the same. 
Okay, so if we take a look at our first row here, we see we're missing E, but look at this. Both A and B have D as their distance. Both A and B have the same charge that's creating the electric field. Therefore, this must be the same. So I'm not going to be able to fit it in here because of the way my finger writes, but just take this number and write it right there, and you'll be good to go. 2 times 10 to the fifth, newtons per coulomb, and that is the electric, uh, electric field intensity, D units away from this much charge. Okay, keep in mind this is a fictional unit, so we don't have to worry too much about it. It also makes you notice relationships instead of just plugging and chugging. So, you could actually calculate what D was if you really wanted to. Um, so you could go through any time the Q values are the same and the D values are the same, then all these E values are the same once we find these E values. So now how do we find those E values? I'm glad you asked. Let's go on to our next slide here. So remember we looked at in our last video the relationship between E and Q, and we saw that they were directly proportional. Okay, in other words, if Q doubles, E will double. Keep in mind, in order to see that, we have to have R stay constant. Let's look for a place we could apply this. Okay, so we could look at uh, C right here. We see that the charge doubles from 3 to 6. 3 times 10 to the negative fourth to 6 times 10 to the negative fourth. And the distance between them, the R value, stays the same. So that means that if Q is being multiplied by 2, E will be multiplied by 2. So we take that and we multiply it by 2. 4.0. I'm going to leave off the point zero. So 4 times 10 to the fifth. Hey, that even kind of looks like a 5. There you go. The 10 looks a little funny, but you got the idea. 4 times 10 to the 5th. And that is what you got. Once again, because E and Q were directly proportional, since Q doubled, that meant E had to double since R stayed the same. But we also know that E is inversely quadratically proportional to the distance, to R. Okay, so let's take a look at where we could apply that. Okay, let's switch pen colors so we don't do both of these proportionalities in the same color. We'll go to green. So I'm going to look at uh, rows. Let's do F and C. So F and C. Okay, because F and C have the same charge. Okay, so it is important to make sure the charge is the same if you're going to try and see this inverse proportionality here. Okay, and notice that D changes from D to 2D. So we got twice as far away. If R is twice as big, then R squared is four times bigger, but we're going to divide by that. So that makes E four times smaller. Okay, so what is 4 times smaller than E? Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1 times 10 to the 5th. Okay, and so keep in mind, like we learned on the last slide, every time the Q's are the same and the D's are the same, all of these are the same. Every time the D's are the same and the Q's are the same, all the E's are the same. So now you should have this whole row filled out. The final thing I want to look at is taking us back to Coulomb's Law. Okay, and this could be written, we wrote it as Q1 over Q2, but you could write F equals, equals K, and you could use capital Q for the one creating the charge, and lowercase Q for the one 
receiving it. Of course, you could swap them and imagine the second one is the one creating the charge and the first one is the one experiencing it. Um, they it will be equal and opposite. And then over R squared. Okay, so keep in mind now, one way we can look at this that we haven't looked at yet is if Q times Q stays constant and R stays constant, then F will have to be constant. We can see an example of that here in B and C. Okay, so we see both of these are 12 times 10 to the negative 10th. Okay, 6 times 2 and 3 times 4. Both of those are 12, and both of them are d away. So what does that tell us? If the two charges multiplied, the product of the two charges is, is, is constant, and r is constant, and k is always constant, then that means f must be constant. Okay, so that means we can just take the f and put it into the other spot. 0.8 would be the force experienced by the charge in both b and c all right so you've got a bunch of little tricks there a lot of comparing of the two rows to find ones that are similar or a little bit different um, and then you know how to make the changes based on all your proportionalities enjoy puzzling out uh, the uh, electric field intensity concept builder in this uh, puzzle it is nice it'll tell you if things